What's up, people? Joe Winko here, your favorite Hawaiian guy. And here's my next episode of Joe Winko Talk. So, this is going to be a very personal episode of Joe Winko Talk. It's also going to be quite X rated, too. So, if you're under 18, please don't watch this video because a lot of X rated stuff will be discussed in it. So, it's finally Valentine's Day 2022, and here I am, still alone, after all this time. And my autism mind has decided, what better way for me to celebrate Valentine's Day than making Volume 3 of The Failures of My Love Life for a new episode of Joe Winko Talk. So, that's basically what I'm going to be talking about in this episode of Joe Winko Talk. For those of you who've seen my previous Volume 1 and Volume 2 episodes about the failures of my love life, this episode of Joe Winko Talk is going to be about the times I tried finding a lover and partner and ended up not finding it at all. I was tempted on saying that I failed miserably, but it was mainly the people who I talked to who failed miserably. Unless you want to think of it in a way as I failed to attract someone nice to be with, but I'll be getting back to that later. So the first guy I was talking to was some stupid guy who I was talking to on this website called FetLife. Now, we really didn't really get into uh, much of a conversation, really, because it was already going nowhere as it is. He lived all the way in Australia, and he just wanted to perv on me and message me this. Now, um, let me explain to you guys what FetLife is. You guys should know what it is by now. It's basically the site uh, for people who are into, like, dom and sub relationships. The only reason why I'm on that site is because I was typing on a bunch of gay guy forms that I was looking for a boyfriend, but I don't suck cock and I can't take it up the ass. So everyone was telling me, oh, you need to find yourself a submissive guy. Sign up for FetLife.com. And that's the reason why I signed up for FetLife.com. And that's the reason why I had a profile there. However, like basically like every single lover dating site that I was on, I've had absolutely no luck finding anyone on FetLife.com, and quite a few of the guys I'm going to be talking about in this episode of Joe Winko Talk were guys who I met on that site of FetLife.com. But this first guy, I'm going to say that his name was Carter, that's the name I'm going to use for him. He lived in Australia, and we didn't really talk that much, honestly. I'm going to show you our whole conversation on screen right now, since I have it all screenshotted. He sent me a message on FetLife, and let me show you what the message said. I noticed that he was, like, liking a lot of my pictures and everything like that. And then he sent me this message. Hi, Joe. If you're ever in Australia, my mouth is available any time for you. Regards. Carter. Yeah, I'm gonna blur out his real name, but I absolutely hate it when people send me messages like that, honestly. And there's quite a few reasons why. Now, first of all, as you guys all know, I absolutely love to go on adventures and I absolutely love to go on road trips. However, the thing is, I never get anywhere by myself, and that's the biggest misconception that people have about me. They always think that I'm able to go everywhere I want to by myself. They think that I have a car. They think I drive myself everywhere. I don't know how the fuck they think that, because if clearly you watch my dash cam videos, you should be able to notice that I'm not the one driving in those videos. So I don't know how the fuck people don't notice that. And even then, in all my posts online, I always talk about how a stranger I meet online has brought me to California, or how a stranger I met online has brought me to North Carolina, or how a stranger I met online has brought me to Texas. I never say that I got there by myself, and even in the introductions for my videos, I show that it was actually someone I met online, or someone who I'm friends with online, who brought me there, and I don't get anywhere by myself. So that kind of struck a nerve when you said, if you're ever in Australia, my mouth is available for you. And not only that, but also another thing is, 
if I were to ever go to Australia, it wouldn't be because I got there by myself. Someone brought me there. Someone invited me out to Australia. That would be the reason why I was there. And if someone was nice enough to send me a boat ticket to Australia and was nice enough to have me visit them and was nice enough to have me stay with them in Australia and take me on adventures to Australia, well, first of all, I don't even want to go to Australia. I mean, the only thing I would do in Australia is go to the Gold Coast, probably put up a memorial cross for Arena Wright, and also visit the grave of Ebony Simpson, but those are completely different topics that I'm going to save for another video. But that's the only reason, that's the only thing I'd want to do in Australia. Well, also to see a kangaroo, too, because I think kangaroos are adorable. But that's the only reason why I would want to go to Australia. But I really wouldn't want to go to Australia anyway. I'm only interested in stuff in the USA. Also, because Australia has giant spiders that can kill you. And I'm, I'm not going to show a picture of them in this video because I can't stand looking at them, really, because they scare the hell out of me. They used to have spiders like that in the Dominican Republic. And those, those things scared the hell out of me, too. But, yeah, that struck a nerve with me. And also, I don't travel for the intent on having sex with people or meeting people, honestly. That's sickening, really. I mean, like, if someone sees my videos on YouTube and says, Oh, Joe, I want you to come visit me. Let's go to, I'll invite you out to Texas or I'll invite you out to Arkansas and we could go on a road trip together and they send me a bus ticket and have me come visit them. I mean, that's completely different. That person wants me to visit them, and I'm visiting them, and we're going on a road trip to Arkansas, Texas, or Alabama, or Mississippi, or North and South Carolina. Those are places I've been wanting to visit, and I'm going to do YouTube videos in those places because I've been wanting to do videos there. But I'm not going to go all the way across the world to put my penis in some random idiot's mouth, and God knows what diseases this sick fuck has. So... Let me read to you what I said in response to him. I mean, I figured it was worth a shot mentioning this, at least, because an Australia adventure would be pretty cool. And if you're from Australia, don't take what I said personally, please. But I said, I typed in, I can't get to Australia by myself. If you send me a plane ticket, I can, even though I hate flying on airplanes. I was pretty doubtful that he would, would actually do that, but then he replied with a smiling and a crying face, like a laughing with tears face. And I already knew where it was going then. I replied back to him, What's your point in messaging me? What, what was your point in messaging me? I accidentally forgot to type the word, word the was in the last message, but let's move on. And then he replies, Not to offer you a free ride to Australia. I, I can't do an Australian accent. Uh, don't they talk like British people? Not to offer you a free ride to Australia. I was replying to your message in your profile. Why would you even ask me to buy you a plane ticket? And then I replied to him, You seriously thought I'd bother meeting you if someone brought me to Australia? I mean, that's just what I was explaining earlier. I mean, if someone brought me to Australia, sent me a plane ticket to Australia, I'm not gonna... I would never stray off to meet some horny bloke. Is, is that what they call each other in Australia? Some horny, pathetic bloke like this idiot. I would be staying with the person who invited me to Australia, especially off in a foreign country. I mean, what the fuck, really? I mean, I know what you guys are probably going to say. Joe, you're overthinking it because of your autism. But seriously, that was stupid and that was disgusting for him to even say that. Honestly, that idiot. Okay, so I typed in, you seriously thought I'd bother meeting you if someone brought me to Australia? And then he says, I was replying to your message on your profile, and then I typed back, I actually hate it when guys send me messages like the one you just sent me, dude. I've posted about that before. And that actually is true. I have posted about that before. I hate it when guys online tell me, oh, if you're ever in here or here, we should get together and hook up with each other. Because it pisses me off, really, because that's not what I do. If you see me in another place, it's because someone else brought me there. And I'm with that person while I'm there. I mean, th in all fairness, if you watch some of my adventure videos on YouTube, it does seem like I'm at that place by myself, but I truly am not at that place by myself. It's because someone brought me there. And even while I'm doing that YouTube video, usually the person who brought me there is right there with me while I'm doing the YouTube video and is watching me do it. 
I mean, look at this picture, for example. Me in Flagler Beach, Florida. I didn't get there by myself. Who the fuck do you think took that picture? And here's another picture of me in Daytona Beach, Florida. I definitely didn't get there by myself. Who the fuck do you think took this picture? And I hate it when guys send me messages like that. If you're ever here, uh, you should get together with me. No, I fucking wouldn't. Not unless you sent me a bus ticket or a train ticket to come visit you. I mean, I'm not going to stray off from the person who invited me out there to meet you. And I will admit, I am taking it a bit personally. But you guys have to remember, I'm also thinking about the other guys I'm going to be talking about in this episode. So I'm a bit, I'm a bit heated up at the thought of everything that I went through so far. But let's continue. And then I was replying to his message when he says not to offer you a free ride to Australia. I typed in, good, I don't want to go to Australia anyway. Your country sucks. <laughs> okay, okay. As I said earlier, if you're from Australia, don't take it personally. If someone was actually nice enough to invite me out to Australia to visit and to send me a boat ticket or a plane ticket to Australia to visit them, that, also, that actually would be a really cool idea. I actually don't have a passport at all, so I would need to figure that out first. Well, I do have one, but it expired, so I would have to get it recertified or renewed or something like that. And then I typed in, Why the hell would I let you suck my dick if you weren't the one to take me to Australia, dude? That's fucking stupid. Get real. I don't give out my dick to anyone. I don't give my dick out to everyone. Uh, I usually don't like using the word dick, but when you piss me off, I might use it. And I don't know if I'm talking about it like that. Because that absolutely is true. I seriously don't give it out to anyone. I mean, like, when I go on Grindr, um, like, I never do sex on the first meet. I always prefer to meet the person first and hang out with them for a long time before we eventually get to it. I mean, if you catch me at a bad time, which is actually even more rare nowadays, like, back when I was really young, like, you could catch me at a bad time. But nowadays, it's pretty rare to catch me at a time where I'll just let a random guy suck me off. That's extremely rare nowadays, because I have a lot more self-respect nowadays and more control over myself nowadays. But that's the thing, because I think it's disgusting to just hook up with someone, really, and let them put their mouth all over my penis and shit like that. And then he typed in, You need to change your profile. What you say in messages is totally different to what you say on your profile. I don't know how the fuck it is, because I think I even mentioned that, that I don't hook up with anyone, and then he blocked me right after that. But let me show you guys what it says on my Fat Life profile. Let me pull it up real quick. This idiot. My name is Joe, and I'm a single gay loving slash sensual master. Who's looking for a nice guy who wants to be my submissive lover. I'm a total top, but mainly just into having my penis sucked a lot. I'm also open to relocating. Well, kinda. Um, I, I, I didn't... Yeah, no, I just put that up there anyway, gosh. And also, I'm always trying to get away from Florida. During the spring slash summer slash early fall, at least. I've been here for way too long and been wanting to visit someplace else. I don't have a car, so if you want to help me get away, just send me a message and a bus ticket or train ticket. We'd have to plan that out first. Major plus if you like to drive and go on road trips too. But don't get me wrong, I definitely do love living in Florida. I don't, I just don't like spending all of my time here. Because it's true, I get bored when I'm in the same place for too long. I'll be getting back to that in a little bit. Also, the red pointy bandana that I wear in a lot of my pictures and YouTube videos is just my YouTube trademark, honestly. Then I have the link to my YouTube channel. I also have mentioned there that I don't like it when people call me sir, call me master, or even Joe instead. I mean, um, yeah, I even did an episode of Joe Winko talk about that a long time ago. Doesn't really seem like enough people have seen that episode, but I'll have a link to it in the pinned comments so you guys can watch it again. So nowhere on my profile does it say that I'm just going to let any idiot put his mouth on my penis? Because I definitely will not, honestly. So, that's the first guy for Volume 3 of Failures in My Love Life. I mean, I know that when I was talking about it, it seemed like I was more angry about it than I really was. I was really just annoyed at that time because I was getting stir-crazy with being at home for so long and then someone sending me a message like that. Yeah, that's another thing I forgot to forgot to mention. Imagine 
you're getting stir crazy with being at home for a long time and someone sends you a message like that, I'm pretty sure it would piss you off too, really. So, like always, it gets worse, honestly. So, back on Fat Life, a couple months ago, there was another guy who lived up in Virginia who I was talking to on Fat Life. Well, actually, not really Virginia. It was more like the Maryland, Virginia area, around that area. I don't even really remember the exact city. I just remember that he was close to Virginia. And he said that, like, I was typing online saying that I was looking for a lover and a partner who likes to drive and go on road trips. And he said that he wanted to have me come up to Virginia and visit him for Thanksgiving. He said, oh, I'll send you a train ticket to Virginia and you can come visit me for Thanksgiving. And he saw the map of all the places I wanted to road trip to. And he actually commented on that because I had it posted on my profile. He said, oh, I would love to go to some of these places with you. I see that you want to go to Virginia because I'm honestly spiritually connected to Virginia. It's a state that I'm spiritually connected to. First of all, my next Sims 2 horror movie, On Rio 2, takes place in the state of Virginia. Another reason why I'm spiritually connected to Virginia is because of the way the state is shaped, like its state boundaries are shaped the exact same way that my red pointy bandana is shaped when it's unwrapped and off my head. So that's another reason why I'm spiritually connected to Virginia. Not to mention that it's also a very beautiful state as well. You have the mountains to the western side of the state, and then you have the beautiful um, semi-subtropical beaches to the eastern part of the state, because it actually does have palm trees, like, around the Virginia Beach area. Every now and then a deep freeze comes in and kills a few of them off. Well, almost all of them off every now and then. But they still have palm trees there nonetheless, even though they don't last for very long. Also, there's another state that I'm spiritually connected to. Not quite as much as Virginia, but I've been thinking about Maryland a lot, and I really want to go to Maryland. There's this song that makes me think of Maryland, and it's called Tell Me Lies by Fleetwood Mac, and it goes like, Tell me lies, tell me sweet little lies, that song. I'm not sure if you guys heard it before. The reason why that song makes me think of Maryland is because that other song by Fleetwood Mac made me think of Delaware. I even did a video of me playing the piano to it, um, the song. Oh, ah, I want to be with you everywhere. But I changed the lyrics to make it about Delaware, and I was singing, Oh, ah, let's take a drive through Delaware. And I also do love Delaware and really been wanting to go back. So, I, so my autism mind, I thought it only made sense to, if a Fleetwood Mac song makes me think of Delaware, it only makes sense for a Fleetwood Mac song to also make me think of Maryland as well because we actually had to drive through Maryland to get to Delaware. Um, that was a stranger who took me on the road trip to uh, Virginia back in 2019, who also ended up taking me to Delaware and Connecticut and across Pennsylvania, New York, Ohio, Michigan, and then back to Wisconsin to my adoptive parents because they were the ones taking me back to Florida. But that's a whole other story I'll get into later. But that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to do a video about exploring Maryland as well. And I also wanted to drive down Interstate 81 uh, along the western side of Virginia. Because when you drive down Interstate 81, at the top part of it, the mountains are like really flat. And it's a bit, it, it's like really flat, the land is really. But as you keep driving south, you get closer and closer to the Appalachian Mountains, and the mountains get higher and higher. And it's absolutely beautiful, and I wanted to record that whole entire drive on my dash cam. I also wanted to visit Roanoke, Virginia, because they have this huge, they have this huge star in Roanoke, Virginia, which is apparently like a major landmark, and it's the Roanoke Star, and they light it up every night. And I wanted to do a video in front of the Roanoke Star and take a selfie in front of the Roanoke Star and post it on YouTube. So you you guys can all watch it and I thought that'd be really awesome so Maryland in Maryland I just wanted to visit Ocean City but also like the capital of Maryland and possibly also the path of the La Plata tornado that occurred back in April of 2002 which was an F5 tornado that struck um, Maryland and I thought that was really interesting because usually Maryland doesn't really seem like a tornado state it's like a really coastal state but it's beautiful though and I'm trying to think of a place in Western Maryland feature, because Maryland's a really small state. You can do a video about exploring Maryland. 
but I haven't really thought of any landmarks in Western Maryland to feature in the video, but maybe someone watching this one can think of one. Hopefully you guys end up taking me there too, really. I mean, you don't have to be my lover and partner to take me on a road trip, honestly. So I told this man about all that, and he said, oh, Joe, I would love to do that with you. Yeah, I would love to invite you up to Virginia for you to come visit. I mean, he was supposed to have me come up there and visit him back in November 2021. However, in October 2021, we started talking around September 2021. But fast forward to October 2021, all of a sudden he disappears. And not quite the way you would imagine someone to disappear. He was still posting stuff on FetLife. He was still commenting on people's pages on FetLife. He was still posting on FetLife, but whenever I would message him, he would just ignore me. Whenever I text him, he would ignore me. Whenever I tried calling him, he would ignore me. And I thought that was kind of fucked up. I mean, if you're going to ghost me, at least block me on everything, really. I mean, don't just, like... I don't know. I don't know what the hell his problem is. I mean, it's wrong to ghost me anyway, especially after you said you would do all that. And he legitimately seemed excited for all of it. But, and I am disappointed, I am actually really pissed off in that, that's not good, really. But he's not the first person to stab me in the back. I mean, the South Carolina backstabbers did that too. They said they wanted to take me on ro road trips and they wanted me to come live with them even. That was way back when I was living in Wisconsin and desperate to escape Wisconsin. But don't get me wrong, I do get stir-crazy being in the same place for too long, but it's not like I hate Florida and want to leave. It's more that I, every now and then, I just want to take a break from Florida and go somewhere else to visit. But I do love Florida. This is where I want to spend the rest of my life in. But it was just messed up that he just said, oh, Joe, we can go on road trips to Virginia and Maryland. And then was excited for me to come visit him. And he was also interested in becoming my lover and partner too, which is even better. But then he just flaked on me, cut me off, and he was just a jerk, really. That man absolutely was. And it pisses me off, honestly. But we're not done yet. Let me move on to the next guy. Okay, so now there is this guy. Now, I was the first one to reach out to him because I kept having, like, putrid luck with the people I was tending to attract on, well, basically the people I tend to attract on any dating site so far, at least, but with absolutely putrid luck with the people I was attracting on Fat Life. So I decided, you know what? I mean, maybe it's time for me to go and approach someone instead, really. And that's what I did this time, which is, that's usually very rare. Usually I wait for people to reach out to me and contact me instead. But, um, you know, this time I decided to bend the rules, and <laughs> this is what I apparently got for it. So I messaged this one 63-year-old submissive guy on FetLife. He had typed all over his profile that he was looking for a dominant master to be with, and also that he was a total bottom and a cocksucker, too. He was also typing about how his penis doesn't work and he can't get erect anymore, which is kind of the reason why I messaged him, but I wasn't going to throw that in his face right away. But, um, <laughs> I sent him a message on there, and I typed in, hey, what's up? And then he replied, what can I do for you, sir? So he, so clearly he didn't read my profile, he was calling me sir, and which kind of struck a nerve a tad bit, but I let it slide for that time. So then I typed in, how are you doing? And then he typed in, I'm doing fine, sir. What can I do for you? Okay, he asked, what can I do for you the second time in a row? Now, I get it. He has himself listed as a slave. He says that he's looking for a dominant master, but that wasn't the vibe that I was picking up from him. When he was asking, what can I do for you? It didn't feel like he was like presenting himself to be at service for me. It felt more like he was trying to figure out why the hell I was messaging him so he could get me out of his hair as fast as possible. And I thought that was a bit rude, but I didn't overreact. I didn't overreact. I just kept trying to talk to him, and then he typed in, 
I'm sorry, sir, if this posts twice, but my first response vanished. I'm doing fine, sir. Thanks. Is there something I can do for you? Okay, ask me a third time, but I think the message he sent me a little bit before then, he thought that I didn't get it, even though I just did, but is there something I could do for you? And then I just told him, I just wanted to talk. You caught my attention. How are things in Texas? Oh yeah, this guy also lived in Texas, and I absolutely love Texas, um, but gosh, I never really had. <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, I have managed to meet some really cool and really nice people from Texas, but at the same time, they don't even come close to the number of mean people I met from Texas. And I, the people, the mean people from Texas, technically I didn't meet them because we never met in person. But that's worthy of a whole new separate episode of Joe Winko Talk. Make sure to subscribe and stay tuned because I'm eventually going to be covering that also in a video. But I typed in, how are things in Texas? And then he typed in, things are great here, sir. Quiet, but actually very good. I don't know why the hell all these idiots have the urge to call me sir over and over again. And, and, he, and this guy is like 63 years old, like old enough to be my granddad, and he's calling me sir. I mean, I know it's like a kink thing for them, but I seriously hate it when people call me sir. And if you guys really want to know why, just watch my video on why I hate being called sir. I'll have the link to it in the pinned comments. I did that one quite a while ago, but it doesn't seem like it's catching enough attention, really. But let me continue. Then I typed in, Oh, that's nice. I always love Texas. So what are you looking for on FetLife? You know, that's usually how I start a conversation with someone on FetLife, but let's move on. Well, sir, oh, yes, yeah, just, just, he just keeps going at it, Real, does he? I'm hoping to find a master, someone to serve online, long distance or offline, locally. Long distance or offline, locally? That doesn't even make sense. Oh, okay, well, let, let me not get into that. Oh, I see. Same thing I'm looking for, really. And then he just replies, okay. And then I typed in, yeah, how have you served a master online? And then he types in, then he types in, well, becoming the slave they want me to be and demonstrating on the cam or in pick. But for either, I have to get to know him and him me to know we gel as dom and sub. Oh yeah, I mean, I found that, that out pretty quick from this conversation. So then I typed to him, Ah, oh, I see. What would you want to know about me? And then he replies, Well, first would be what your experience is. You're somewhat young for a master. Um, okay. We're gonna... We're getting on to something. I mean, something that I'm gonna talk about in this video. Now, on FetLife... Usually it's only the really old guys who who do this. They tell you that you can't be a dominant master or a dom if you're in your early 20s or if you're really young like I am. I mean, um, yeah, or if you're claiming to be young like I am, I should say. But if you're, uh, <laughs> if you're really young, you can't be a dominant master. That's what, uh, usually it's only the really old guys who say that. Like guys in their 60s, 70s, and 80s. They, I don't even know how they managed to live that long with the freaky shit they're into, really. But that's what they all say. And they tend to get really disrespectful and really rude about it, really. As, you, as you're going to see pretty soon. And it always gets on my nerves, really, because, like, there's no rule book, there's no official set of rules on how a master should behave, or no official set of rules on how a dom and sub relationship is supposed to work. I mean, yeah, it's supposed to, you're supposed to respect each other, and everything has to be consensual, really. Nothing can be non-consensual, even though... Even though a lot of idiots on FetLife say that they want non-consensual stuff, nothing's supposed to be non-consensual. You gotta just treat everyone, like, it has to be ethical, really. That's what it has to be. But there's no, like, set book of rules. And then you get these old idiots on FetLife who tell you that you're too young to be a master, you're too young to know anything about being a master. And then as soon as I tell them, okay, then tell me exactly, what do I not know about being a gay dominant master? As soon as I ask them that, they can't think of anything to tell me. 
And then I tell them to shut the fuck up because it's absolutely true. I mean, I'm going to be getting back to that in a little bit. Let, let me just keep reading this shit show conversation to you guys. So I replied back to him. I know all the rules, all the safe words and everything. I've been told about it enough. And then he typed in, you're somewhat young for a master. And I typed in, yeah, I get that a lot too. Then I typed to him, I actually had a submissive lover once a long time ago, but he passed away from cancer. It's sad that he was the one who passed away from cancer, but these fucking idiots are all still alive, really. Well, not all of them are, but quite, quite a few of them. I mean, if you watch volume two of Failures in My Love Life, a lot of those guys, the COVID got them, but I'll get back to that later. I replied to his message again. And I typed in, I've actually seen a lot of masters who are younger than I am also, even on Fat Life. And then he replies, sorry about your submissive lover. Yes, I know there's a lot of doms who claim to be experienced, especially 18 or 19 year old doms. Well, they have to start somewhere. I mean, gosh, I mean, young people can be dominant too. I don't know what the fuck is wrong with this guy. But all they're after is money. They don't have a clue about the lifestyle. Now, the thing about me is I never ask anyone for money. When have you ever heard of me walking up to someone and asking them for money? Like, yeah, I ask my YouTube followers to get me presents off my Amazon wish list, but that's not money. I mean, I'm not asking him for money. I didn't ask him to cash at me any money or shit like that. Seriously. And it pisses me off when people claim that I'm just looking for money, because that's not true. Honestly. Stupid. So then he says, so you haven't said anything really about what kinds of training and experience you have. Why the fuck would I need? Uh, I'll get back to that soon. Someone just calling themselves a, a dom or sub doesn't automatically make them one. Uh, apparently on FetLife it kind of does, especially if they don't have any training. It's just not about giving orders and expecting some obedience. So many doms think it is. I received months and years of training and protocols, interactions, obedience, and every dominant dom and sub are different. Different needs, desires, expectations, and there's nothing without trust. Well, yeah, duh. I mean, it's based on what the people agree on, really. But what the fuck did he, does he mean he received years of training, protocols, interactions, and obedience. Well, yeah, he's 63 years old, so what the fuck was he doing? Sucking off a bunch of guys for 60 years? I mean, you call that training? Okay, whatever, just because you had a... Just because you've been flowing around longer than I have doesn't mean that you have anything above me. I mean, what, what, does, what does he do, really? What is there for him to be trained on, honestly? That's... I don't know what his problem is. I think this guy was just an idiot. He Well, clearly he was, but I, I, I'm going to be getting to that really soon. So I replied to his messages and I typed in, well, duh, dude. And then he says, so you haven't really said anything about signs of training? And then I typed in, why does it even matter to you in the first place? It's not like I'm asking you to do anything bad. I'm not even into the rough and freaky stuff anyway. Okay, so let me run this back a little bit. Now, I understand... About the whole training thing, I guess, like, if I was, like, a rope dom and I was tying someone up, I would need to know how to tie them up right so I don't accidentally cut off their circulations or anything like that. Or if I was into burning people with, uh, with, with branding things, I would need to know not to hit a certain artery so they don't die and bleed out. However, the thing is, I have no interest in doing any of that. Nor did I state to him that I had any interest in doing any of that. So that clearly does not fucking matter, because the only thing I like to do sexually, like, yeah, I will have intercourse with the guy if I trust him enough, and if I know that he's STD-free and everything, but really the main thing that I'm into is just sitting back and just getting my penis sucked on a lot, or just sitting back and having him climb on top of me and ride me. Or just having him lay back and having me get on top of him and pounding his ass for a while till I blow my load inside of him. But either way, I'm not one of those freaky guys who are into, like, extreme freaky stuff. I'm more of a loving and sensual master. I don't like hitting anyone. I don't like slapping anyone. I don't like clawing at anyone. 
Because if I feel like doing that to you, it's not because I love you, it's because I hate you. But usually when a guy pisses me off that much, I just cut him out of my life and just move on and do a video about him and <laughs> forget about him, really. But then the last message I got from him was right after that, and he typed to me, You've just shown me that you have no training and no clue as what you're doing. Um, even though I kind of do, you're just an angry, miserable old man, but let's move on. As I expected, you call yourself a dom, but have nothing to back it up. You have no idea what protocols are or how to interact with a sub beyond barking orders. Um, well, I'm more of a loving and sensual master. You probably would have found that out if you spent more time to talk to me instead of constantly trying to get me out of your hair, but eh, whatever. If I'm wrong, then you have no idea how to express yourself. Well, how the fuck was I supposed to express myself? I mean, yeah, I would have asked them to give me a call, but I express myself all the time. This video is a prime example of me expressing myself, really. Uh, but I didn't ask him for his phone number because, like, usually when you ask someone for their phone number right away on FetLife, they get, like, angry and they get mad and then they don't want to talk to you. Actually, no, that's more of something that happens on Caller Space. I just didn't think of it at this time. We weren't talking for very long. This whole conversation only occurred in one day. He says, You're the kid who thinks he's a dom, who thinks he has his experience. Well, I certainly do have experience. I have experience of people on this site. I know that 95% of the people on that life are full of shit. I mean, or m miserable old people like you. And you think bossing people around makes you a dom. That's all play games, not dom and sub. And then he blocked me. And as I just said, this whole conversation literally went down in literally one day. And that's, I mean, that's the, that is kind of a positive thing, really. I mean, like, cause you know, usually when I hear about someone in relationships that don't work out, Usually what happens is they spend like six months with the person or years with the person and then all of a sudden something goes wrong and then they just crash and they break up with each other just like that. But what I notice with myself is that I usually find out when someone is not a match for me right away. It saves me time, but it does bring me down quite a bit really. And yeah, and it upsets me too. But the bright side of it, at least I, I'm able to do these videos about it and express it in these videos, the failures of my love life. I'm already on volume three so far, but that guy really pissed me off. And another thing I want to, another thing I want to say is I think the reason why is the reason why he was being so rude, trying to get me out of his hair. What it really kind of reminds me of, it kind of reminds me of you guys all seen those movies where the kids are playing on the old man's yard and the old man gets pissed off and he's like get off my yard you young whippersnappers that's kind of what it reminded me of but it hits it hits personally even hard now because here i was just trying to be nice to him just trying to talk to him that's exactly what i was doing trying to talk to him trying to be nice to him trying to see if he wants to become my lover and partner and then he just gets all defensive uh, trying to like get me out of his hair and then he snaps on me like that and then he bashes me He insults my intelligence. He thinks just because I'm young or claiming to be young Well, well I am young. What the fuck am I saying? He thinks just because I'm young that I'm stupid and then he snaps on me and then he blocks me What I really think it is. I think it's the whole Generational thing I mean, and you notice this in all my up, all my failures of my love life episode. It's a Joe Wanko talk. You also notice this in all of my other videos I did about when I try talking to a guy online and it ends up going sour and it ends up going bad. There's one thing that you guys probably didn't realize, even with my South Carolina backstabbers and my experience on Black Men's Reign and all those other videos. There's one thing you guys probably don't really notice. Every single guy who I ever talked about in a YouTube video, well, there's one exception, because one guy was the same age as me, 
But every single guy who I talked about in a YouTube video who I didn't get along with and who ended up stabbing me in the back and flaking on me, all of them were a lot older than I am. And all of them were older than I am. I mean, because I never really talked to any other guys in their 20s at all. Because for some strange reason, I think that guys in their 20s, they just want to go out, party, hook up, and have sex, and don't want a relationship or anything. But, well, also because whenever I go on these internet sites, I rarely ever find anyone in their 20s. I usually just find someone... I usually just find people who are a lot older than I am. And also because of my autism mind, I always believe that guys in their 40s and 50s actually want a long-term relationship and don't just want to hook up. Which clearly that isn't true. I learned that the hard way. And I keep learning it over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. As you guys are seeing right now. Also that they're really disrespectful as well. And... I think another thing that triggered this guy, which made him like so angry when I contacted him and so angry and like bashing me, telling me I'm young and don't know any everything. I'm not sure how much he looked at my profile. Well, I'm assuming he didn't really look at it hardly at all, really, but he probably saw me. He saw my pictures on FetLife and you have to remember, this is a 63 year old white man living in Texas. And I'm a black man in my early 20s, have the nerve to call myself a master. And like he was still, <laughs> I'm pretty sure Jim Crow laws were still in effect back when he was a little kid. Probably can't stand to see an African American guy calling himself a master on Fet Life. I'm going to be getting back to that soon, by the way. I mean, because like you probably. I mean, that's not always the first thing people notice about me, that I'm African-American. But probably can't stand that, and one of them has the nerve to talk to him. But, I mean, the main point, really, even if I wasn't African-American, I think he just got mad, because he even had typed on his profile that his penis doesn't work anymore, so he's looking for someone... I mean, which is kind of weird, because, like, usually that only happens to older guys, and he is an older guy. So you think he would be looking for a younger guy, but then he snaps on me like that. It's the stupidest thing ever. I honestly don't get it. And then, what I was saying was, he probably is jealous because he sees a younger guy, and he's mad because he's not young anymore. Even though the younger guy actually likes him, but he decides to take all his anger out on the younger guy, me, and decides to be a jerk to him, saying, oh, you don't know everything. I think that's the thing that's up with all the older people on FetLife who tell you that you don't know anything about being a dom or a dominant master or anything, or you too, you're too young to be a dom. They're mad because they're old, they're on their way to the graves, and they're closer to the graves than you are, and that's why they're snapping on you. And I honestly think that's a bit fucked up, really, because we all eventually end up in the graves. And regardless of age, in my Onrio movie, I died of coronavirus at 24 years old. And I believe that somewhere in an alternate timeline, all the events of my first Onrio movie actually did occur in real life, but in an alternate reality, an alternate timeline. But that's a whole other topic that I'm going to save for a future episode of Joe Winko Talk. I can't let my autism mind go on a ramble right now but overall this guy was a jerk he really pissed me off i mean he didn't piss me off that much it only happened in one day when he ended up blocking me i just rolled my eyes because everything he told me is stuff that i heard before everything that happened is stuff that happened before i mean even with the previous two guys it's stuff that happened before and it just is what it is, really. But let's move on. So this next man who I'm going to be talking about actually wasn't a man I met on Fat Life. This was a man I met on OKCupid. I honestly need to spend more time on sites like Meet Me, Tagged, and OKCupid instead of sites like Fat Life, because it's it's clear that. I'm not getting any luck from anyone I managed to talk to on FetLife, even though someone from the Justice Boys web forms recommended that to me, but that should have been a red flag right there, because the Justice Boys web forms suck too. But this was a guy I met on OkCupid. I'm just going to say that his name was Kent. That's the name I'm going to be using in this video. Not going to say his real name, but I'm just going to say his name was Kent. This guy messaged me on OkCupid 
a really long time ago. And we were planning on getting together and hanging out with each other. He also messaged me on Twitter, too. I actually still have those messages. And this is what he typed to me. And he typed in, Hi, Joe. I saw your road trip post. How long do you think the road trip will take? Okay, let me get back to the road trip post. Basically, uh, what the road trip post was, was back in 2020, I posted this picture on Twitter. That's a picture of my dream road trip. Well, one of my dream road trips. To go on a road trip through Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, and South Carolina, because I thought it would be really cool to experience all those states back to back. And I was planning on doing a YouTube video of exploring Mississippi, then one about a tornado track that tore through northern Alabama in memory of all the people who died. I also wanted to visit a girl's grave in Georgia, and then after that I wanted to go to Myrtle Beach, South Carolina to talk about this one girl who went missing, and then to Savannah, Georgia to do a video about exploring Savannah, Georgia, and then back to Florida. Well, that's where I was living at at the time in Florida. Nowadays, I live in northern Florida, closer to all that stuff, but yeah. I actually did find a stranger online who brought me to Mississippi, but I haven't finished editing that video yet. But it is on its way, so stay tuned for it. I didn't get to go to Alabama and Georgia and South Carolina like I wanted to. But I'm still holding on to hope, really. I want to go to Savannah, Georgia, too. It was actually my adoptive parents who were supposed to take me to Savannah, Georgia, but my adoptive mom was having one of her menopause fits. I'll, I'll explain that in a separate video. I don't want to talk about it now. And they didn't end up taking me to Savannah, Georgia. But then, that, that was basically the whole road trip that this guy was talking about, that Ken was talking about back then. That's how long it's been since I wanted to go there and still haven't gone there yet. And then I typed in, depends on how much of it is done, but I'm estimating eight or nine days rounding up. But that's over, but that's overestimating it a bit, honestly. What makes you ask? And I had a whole bunch of smiley faces. That's for the whole entire trip through Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, and South Carolina. Like Mississippi took three days, exactly how I imagined it, really. Mississippi, to cover the whole state of Mississippi and to do my video about the whole state of Mississippi, that actually took three days to go through all those stops, exactly the way I imagined it, really. Because you have to remember, um, I can't really film a video after nightfall because it's too dark to see anything. It all has to be during the daylight. But it took three days, which is exactly what I imagined. And then I asked him, what makes you ask? And then he said, I may be able to get a weekend off to do B, G, and H, and I with you. Okay, um... The reason why he was saying those letters is because the way the map was labeled, it was marked with uh, it was marked with letters for each spot that I wanted to go to. But uh, apparently, all those letters were Savannah and Myrtle Beach. And then I typed in, "You mean Savannah and Myrtle Beach? Sure, that'd be awesome. But we'd have to plan it out sometime." Or Tallahassee. That's another thing I typed in, because that's another place I've been wanting to visit. Tallahassee, Florida, which is the capital of Florida. The reason why it became the capital of Florida is because it's located between Jacksonville, Florida, and Pensacola, Florida, which used to be the most populated cities in Florida, because no one lived on the Floridian Peninsula because it got too hot there, and they hadn't invented air conditioning yet. But as soon as they did, those places blew up, and that's a whole nother story. I plan on talking about it in the video once I actually find someone who takes me to Tallahassee. One day they might, so yeah. <laughs> he typed in, My next day off is Sunday. We should get together and talk about it. And I said, sure. And then I gave him my number. And then I asked him, how are you doing? And he said, hey, Joe, I'm sorry it's taking me so long to respond. I've been doing things with family for Martin Luther King Day. I'm free on Tuesday, which well, I would want to see you. Next week, Tuesday, on the 28th? Sure. Oh, gosh, this was so long ago by now. But then he typed in, Hi, I actually meant today, but sorry, I wasn't clear. I'm free tomorrow, Wednesday, the 22nd as well. And then I typed in, Oh, okay, I should be free today. Yesterday was really cold, but I should be free. But today I should be free. I'm a bit out of it because I was up late. When do you want to get together today? And then apparently he called and texted me. That's where our messages on Twitter end ended. But apparently he called me and texted me, and then we got together that day. I, I think, I'm pretty sure it was that day. 
But he picked me up from the place where I always used to have people pick me up from whenever I would meet them online and hang out with them in Clearwater. Um, I'm so glad I don't live there anymore. I hated Clearwater. It wasn't fun, but that's a whole nother video. I'll have a link to that video in the pinned comments. I even explained it there. Basically, what we did is he took me out to eat at this buffet. I think it was the Hard Rock Casino Buffet in Tampa, Florida, and it was actually really nice, but you have to remember, this was in January of 2020, during the whole coronavirus stuff, like before it got bad in the USA, right before it got bad, but I kind of had like a sixth sense. I already knew that it was really bad in China, and I was nervous about going to the buffet. Not really entirely nervous, but I was nervous about coronavirus because I knew it was spreading and killing a whole bunch of people in China. But he took me out to eat at the buffet, and it was a lot of fun. I liked being there and everything. And then I remember he bought this bottle of wine that was apparently 20 years old, and he really wanted it and everything. And we were driving around Tampa, and then we decided to drive to the beach. Uh, I, I don't remember what beach it was. Some beach in Tampa or something? Um, I believe it was Apollo Beach. I think that's what it was. I mean, I didn't have my dash cam on me, so I wasn't filming it or recording it. I wish I was, because it was actually really cool going there. We were driving around Apollo Beach with each other. While we were driving around Apollo Beach, he was perving on me again. He was grabbing my penis through my shorts and massaging it and everything, and I'm not gonna lie, I didn't really mind that much. I mean, the whole point was I was looking for a lover and a partner, and I would want my lover and partner to want my penis also, so he was grabbing it and massaging it. And then, somehow, it's been so long, I kind of forgot exactly how the conversation went, but I do remember what he said. We were talking about, like, sexual stuff, and, like, I was talking about the stuff I do sexually. For some reason, people always think that I'm a bottom. Well, not always. But uh, sometimes people think that I'm a bottom, and he was one of the people who thought that I was a bottom, and if he thought I was a bottom, why the hell was he grabbing my penis then? But I told him that I was actually a total top, and uh, I also somehow told him that I don't suck penis at all, I just like getting my penis sucked, that's my favorite thing, and I'm a total top, and I have intercourse with the guy after I trust him enough. And then, at the same time, while he's grabbing and rubbing my penis, he tells me, oh, so it'd be one-sided with you then. And as soon as he said that, that's when I knew, nope, not going to work with him. Nope, not going to work with him. Not going to work with him. And it kind of struck a nerve with me, but I didn't snap on him at all. We kept hanging out for a little bit, but we didn't hang out for too much longer. We went to the beach and walked around a little bit, and then he took me back to Clearwater, and then I never saw him again after that. Thank God, even though this idiot said he was going to take me to Savannah and Myrtle Beach. I kind of knew at that point that it wasn't going to happen, but I wouldn't want to go with him anyway, really. What the fuck do you mean? It's one-sided. Here you are, rubbing your hands all over my penis. Clearly, you're enjoying rubbing your hands on my penis, because I, I don't know why the fuck someone would rub their hands on my penis if they didn't like it. Clearly, you want my penis if you're rubbing your damn hands all over my penis. He wasn't touching my bare penis. He was touching it through my shorts. But clearly, you want my penis. So clearly, you love touching and rubbing on my penis. And clearly, you would enjoy sucking on my penis, too, I'm assuming. What fucking idiot thinks it's one-sided? Because clearly, he enjoys sucking my penis if he wanted to do that. And clearly, he enjoys grabbing and rubbing my penis. The reason why I don't suck penis is because I don't like doing that. I only like for a guy to suck me off. I don't want a penis inside me at all. I don't want it in my mouth. I don't want it up my ass. You wouldn't want to stick it in my mouth, and you wouldn't want to stick it up my ass. Because my teeth are razor sharp and would turn your penis into confetti. But seriously, I really don't like sucking penis at all. I really just like getting sucked. I mean, back when I was a teenager... When I would hook up with a guy, I used to suck him off, and I never liked doing it, and they were always able to tell, they were always able to tell that I hated doing it. I mean, and they always would tell me, if you really don't like sucking cock, then don't do it then, because you're horrible at it. I can tell that you hate it, and I can tell that you're disgusted by it. 
I mean, one time I actually threw up on a guy back when I was a teenager, and my stomach acids actually burnt his penis, and he actually, I heard him holler in pain, and then he was like, why the fuck did you throw up on me? And I said, because I hate sucking penis. And he says, well, you don't fucking have to suck penis if you don't like doing it. And I was like, oh, okay then. So ever since then, I don't suck penis at all because I hate doing it. And I don't like it when guys try to talk me into doing something I don't like to do. And he was an idiot, really, because I had on my OkCupid okay profile that I was a total top, really, and I don't suck penis at all. And I hate when guys get mad about that. And, you know, in all honesty, that's worthy of a whole new Joe Inko Talk episode of me talking about how it's wrong, because sexual boundaries, they honestly need to be respected. And this guy telling me that I'm selfish and that it's one-sided, that, that is offensive, really. But, you know, I honestly don't care, because clearly it's not one-sided. He liked touching my penis and everything, and I'm pretty sure he wanted to suck it, unless he was just sucking it just because he thought I would suck him. But I wouldn't want a guy to suck my penis if he was like that anyway. But this guy is a fucking idiot. I mean, looking back on those messages, it really strikes a nerve with me, honestly. And then I wondered, is this guy still alive? Because... The thing about this guy, vertically, he was the same height as me, but horizontally, he was like five or six of me. Uh, long story short, he was not skinny at all. He definitely wasn't skinny. And this was right before coronavirus became like a worldwide pandemic, because we hung out with each other just that one day in January of 2020. So uh, just a couple hours ago. I tried Googling his name and seeing if he was still alive, and I couldn't really find any death records or anything, because that's usually how I'm able to tell if a guy I talk to online is dead, if he has any death records written for him, but the last thing I saw from him was from October of 2021, a post on Instagram, and I rarely post stuff on Instagram either, but... I was thinking, oh, that's weird that it's been that long, but, eh, I don't know, and I honestly don't fucking care, but me and him never talked to me again, so he's, he might as well be dead to me. I mean, we're not going to talk to each other again, we're clearly not a match, and thankfully I was able to find that out really fast, really. Saved me a lot of time, honestly, but I always find it out fast, and it's not like I had anyone else to waste my time on, that's the sad part, really. But speaking of that, let's move on. The next guy, I'm going to say that his name was Chester. Now, this was a guy from North Carolina from FetLife. And, wow, I mean, I don't even know where to start on this guy. Now, the first thing I should probably say, he wasn't very attractive. That's what I'm going to start out with saying. That's Yeah, that's definitely what I'm going to start out with saying. He wasn't very attractive, and in all honesty, I really don't care what a guy looks like. I mean, you could be the ugliest guy on earth, but if you're sweet on the inside, I will still fall in love with you, and I will still be with you, honestly, if we're compatible and if we're a match. And the ugliness that you have will eventually... I won't even notice it, honestly. I'll eventually think that you look really nice. Like, say if a guy has, like, a really, really, really big nose, a really, really big, strange-looking nose, and it looks, like, gross enough. Well, I would want someone to be hygienic. That's the one thing. I'm not, I can't really judge for this guy, really, whether he was hygienic or not, but I would want someone hygienic. But let's say someone has a really big, gross-looking nose, but they were, like, a true sweetheart, and they are really nice. I mean... I wouldn't even notice his massive, gross-looking nose then. I mean, what I... Like, eventually, what I would start thinking, I would associate someone with a huge, gross-looking nose. I would think that people who have big, gross-looking noses are nice then, and it would warm my heart, because it would always make me think of him then. I'm not even sure if that made sense, but... He didn't even have a big nose at all, and I don't really care what a guy's nose looks like anyway. I don't really care what a guy looks like. But he wasn't attractive. I need to make that really clear. And if that was the only thing about him, then I wouldn't mind being his lover and partner at all. 
but clearly it was not. It wasn't. So this guy was named Chester. He was from North Carolina. I think he was in the military too because like he he had like a boot camp picture of himself in an army uniform on his FetLife profile. Ironically, in his boot camp picture, he actually looked really handsome there. And I only saw like four or five pictures of him. I didn't really see that much of him. I mean, I think we did talk on Discord actually through video chat, but it was like really dark in his room. I couldn't really see him very well. But in his boot camp picture, he looked really handsome in that picture. And it was more the way he carried himself, really, that made him look unattractive to me, really. He was also struggling. He was going through some difficult times. I mean, I'm definitely struggling myself also, as, as you guys know. I mean, I'm in a much better place than I am now. I was living with my adoptive dad's brothers, but now I'm living in a vacation home that my adoptive parents are renting who are letting me stay here, so I'm happy about that at least. But he he was struggling. He was telling me that like um, he was worried about stuff that was going on in his life, and I just thought it was weird that he like threw all this stuff on me. We talked on the phone for six hours one night, and... It wasn't an enjoyable conversation, really. Like, when someone's talking on the phone with me, I always prefer for people to call me instead of text me. But when someone just keeps talking and talking and talking, especially if it's my first time meeting this person because I don't want to be rude to them, I'm usually... If you catch me at a bad time, I might be too polite to tell this person I have to go now, bye, and hang up. And apparently he caught me just at that right time when I didn't have the guts to tell the person, I have to go now, bye. Eventually I did, but it took me six hours to. He kept me on the phone for six hours. Our conversation was a bit interesting at first, but eventually it got really boring because he just kept rambling to me about this negative stuff over and over again. And he was talking to me about this last guy that he was married to and how it didn't go so well and how this guy was like... Uh, I don't even remember what he said about this guy, but he was basically trash-talking his ex-partner the whole entire time, which is really something that you should not do when you're starting it, when you're attempting to start a relationship with someone else, but that's not all. We started talking about sexual stuff, too, and then he was saying that, and I guess this is, I mean, I did meet this guy on FetLife, so it makes perfect sense. He says that he thinks sex is disgusting because it's the most disgusting thing you can do with a person because you're mixing your body fluids and stuff in your body with the other person's body. Like, that's kind of... I don't, I don't remember exactly how he worded that, but that was technically what he was getting at. And then he was saying that sperm is disgusting because it's dick snot. That's what he was calling it. That's the exact words he was using. He was saying that it was dick snot. And, you know, I kind of took that personally. I mean... I mean, yeah, it's stuff that comes out of a person's penis and everything, but it's not snot. When snot comes out of your body, that's waste. That's waste that's leaving your body. That's supposed to leave your body. When sperm comes out of your body, yeah, that's supposed to leave your body, but it's supposed to go into someone else's body. And I, like, one of my biggest sexual fantasies was to be with a guy who was, like, a pervert who would like, always want to, like, suck my penis all the time, and who would always want to, like, swallow my sperm all the time, and who would be, like, excited to swallow my sperm all the time, and who would always want to do that with me, and that's honestly what I like, really, a guy who, because I also have some tablets, I forgot where I put those, but I have them around here somewhere, I mean, I haven't had my penis sucked in a really long time, I've been keeping to myself lately, but I also even have some tablets that make my sperm taste sweet. So if a guy was like sucking me off and I ejaculated inside of his mouth, he would love it and want to suck my penis over and over again so he can taste my sweet tasting sperm. Also, in addition to that, in case you guys forgot, I'm also a type 1 diabetic. That's a condition I suffer from. And type 1 diabetes... This is the way I heard one person describe it. It means that there's too much sugar in your body because your pancreas doesn't produce insulin that breaks down carbohydrates 
and it just turns into sugar in your blood. That's basically what type 1 diabetes is. My pancreas doesn't produce insulin, so I have to inject myself with insulin to survive. Here's one of my insulins that I inject myself with. But therefore, there's more sugar in my body that should be inside a normal person. And more sugar leaves my body. Like, if I stick my finger, that's how I check my blood sugar. I stick my finger, and there's sugar in my blood. And if my blood sugar is high, I have to give insulin and to correct it. And it can also get too low, too, because also my pancreas doesn't produce glucose to bring my blood sugar up when it's low. So it can also get too low, too. And when my blood sugar is low, then I need to eat something like candy or something to bring it up. But as I was saying, it means that there's too much sugar in my body. And if I stick my finger, my blood will have sugar inside of it. You can't see it, but like my blood sugar meter is able to pick up how much sugar is in my blood. Well, technically kind of everyone has sugar in their blood, but mine has more. But also, my sperm also has sugar inside of it because, I mean, sperm and blood are connected to each other, really. I mean, the sugar does run into my sperm, too. So I have sweeter tasting sperm, too. And I wanted to find a nice man who would want to suck me off all the time. Well, who would want to perform oral sex on me all the time and who would enjoy consuming my sperm and merging with them. But this guy, Chester, he seemed really disgusted by it. And now, don't get me wrong, I'm actually definitely able to be in a sexless relationship. That's one thing I never really talked much about, an asexual relationship. Like if I met a guy who just wanted to be with me all the time, but who didn't want to suck me off or do anything sexual with me, That'd be totally fine with me, honestly. I mean, because that's it's more of the companionship that matters the most, really. But um, I can definitely be fine in a relationship like that. Just be with a guy, like, without sex, really. I mean, and I told him that. I, I'm pretty sure I did mention that to him. But I was saying, okay, if you don't want a guy sperm inside you, you think it's so disgusting, then why are you... Why are you looking... Why are you a bottom then? Why are you saying that you want to suck someone off and then you're telling me this? Basically what this guy's kink was, was he wanted to... He wanted to act like it was really disgusting. He wanted to act like he didn't like sucking my penis, so I would like make him suck my penis and so he wouldn't enjoy it and everything and it was like a kink thing for him. I mean, I know that doesn't make sense, and it truly doesn't make sense, but I kind of see where he was coming from. He gets off on acting like his partner is disgusting. He doesn't want his partner inside of him. He doesn't want his partner to come inside of him. I was humoring him for a bit during that phone call we had, but when I kept thinking of that, like, the, least, so, the more I was unokay with it. I don't want someone who tries to say that I'm disgusting and that they don't want me inside of them or anything like that, because I don't want to feel that way about myself. I clearly don't feel that way about myself. I don't think I'm disgusting, really. I mean, even though I said earlier that I think sucking penis is disgusting, it's disgusting when I do it, because I don't want to have a penis in my mouth, and you don't want to stick your penis in my mouth either, because my teeth are razor sharp, and plus I won't enjoy it at all, and... Yeah, that's the thing, but I don't want to, I don't want someone who acts like it's disgusting calling my sperm dick snot, because it's not snot, that's, that's pretty offensive, honestly, when I think about it now, and when I'm saying it out loud and talking about it now. That's one thing that honestly repelled me from him, seriously. You're supposed to love your partner, and you're supposed to want them with you. I mean, yeah, the sexual roles need to be respected, but like, if he didn't like sucking penis, then he doesn't have to be with a guy who's a top who wants his penis sucked. He could just go find a guy who's a bottom or go be in an asexual relationship, just like something I'm open to. If he wanted to be in an asexual relationship with me, I wouldn't mind then. We could just live together and we don't have to have sex at all. We could just live together, go on road trips together, and just hang out with each other. We don't have to do anything sexual. But then he's saying that he 
wants to have sex with me, but he wants to act like he doesn't want it, saying that dick's not and everything. And, you know, like, I was kind of put off. I was put off by that. After thinking about it enough, I was put off by it, really. I mean, it took it a while to get to me, but I'm like, oh, that does not sound good, really. And then we talked on the phone some more, and, like, I think he called me one time while I was jerking off. And we were talking about sexual stuff, and I said that my favorite thing is getting sucked off, and that I don't get into intercourse right away. I have to get comfortable with someone before I do that. And I just remember him, like, straight up saying, I want more than just sucking you off. I want your penis up my ass. Okay. Now, you guys have to remember a couple things. This man was not very attractive. He wasn't. I mean, if he was, like, Chris Como, and he was telling me that he wants my penis up his ass, and he was demanding it that way, that'd be hot. But when it's, when it's someone who's not very attractive, and they're saying it like that, I mean, like, if he said, oh, well, wouldn't you want to do it with me sometime? Like, if he said it, like, nice and kindly like that, and I would, would have been like, well, yeah, we definitely would. I mean, once I got comfortable with you, and once we got close to each other, because I can't just stick my penis up someone's ass right away, mainly because I was raised during a time when everyone would warn you about HIV and everything, and we were really educated on HIV, and that's a major reason why, and also because I don't want to get shit all over my penis. I think that's gross. I haven't had intercourse in a really long time, and whenever I do, I only do it with someone who knows how to clean themselves out, and he didn't even... He didn't even explain any of that to me, but fair enough I didn't ask him about it, but, you know, I have to get close to someone before I have intercourse with them. But for him to, like, straight up demand it like that on the phone, that just totally turned me off. Especially considering that he's calling my penis and, and my sperm dick snot and acting like he doesn't want it, but then, like, demands it like that. And especially with him not even being that attractive. I mean, all those in combination, I mean, if had it just been one of those things, I would have been okay, I would have been okay with it. But all those in combination, that just severely turned me off. But that wasn't the final straw. What ended up happening was... Remember, I met this guy on FetLife, and the way I try to find people on FetLife is by joining groups, because for some stupid reason, you can't really search for people on FetLife. Like, you can't say that you're looking for gay guys in Florida. You have to, because, like, the way the site is set up, I think originally when they first created FetLife, they meant for it to be, like, a site where you find like BDSM events to attend and everything and you meet people that way. You can't search for what you're looking for on the site of Fat Life like you were able to on MySpace because back in the MySpace days, you were able to like type in if you want guys in their 20s, 30s, or 40s uh, living in Florida who are gay, you would be able to find them right away and single guys and everything. But that's, they don't have a search feature like that on Fat Life and that kind of pisses me off quite a bit. However, on FetLife, the way you find people is you have to post in the groups on FetLife and post what you're looking for in the groups on FetLife. And there's groups for, like, different locations, and I always post in the different locations on FetLife because I, I can't just post in the Florida groups because I'm not finding anyone in the Florida groups. But I'm not finding anyone in any of the other states either, but I post there all the time anyway. And when you make a post on FetLife... You can bump the post every now and then, type in still looking for this, and when someone comments on the post, it gets moved to the front page of the group, so anyone who's, on, who's at the group that time will notice it right away. And I posted in the Pennsylvania section of FetLife. I explained this in my I Hate Throat Fucking episode of Joe Winko Talk. I'll have the link to that in the pinned comments. I posted in the Delaware, I think it was either Delaware or Pennsylvania section of FetLife that I was still looking for this. It was an ad I posted a long time ago saying that I was looking for a submissive guy in Pennsylvania who would want to have me visit him. 
I mean, well, that's another thing, because I like going on adventures, too, so I figured might as well kill two birds with one stone by posting in the other sections, because you never know, I might actually end up finding someone from those states who would actually want to come live in Florida, and then we can live in Florida and be together after I visit them and everything. Clearly that hasn't happened yet, but you never know. And then he commented on one of my posts. I'm going to show you what he typed on there. I mean, I guess he was trying to, like, now, I don't know how to explain this, but but this guy, Chester, he commented on one of my posts, and I'm going to show you the comment he typed. Crazy, this was just four hours ago. I think you already know what not to do. And basically what he was saying was that I shouldn't type still looking for this, still looking for this on my FetLife post. Even though, like, because uh, I guess he was trying to, like, claim me and him as being in a relationship together already. Even though we, I guess what he was trying to do there was claim that me and him were in a relationship with each other. Even though me and him have not met each other yet, we never ended up meeting in person. Didn't even have any plans to meet each other in person or any of that. Yet he's commenting on my post saying, uh, insinuating for me not to keep bumping them because me and him are talking. You know, and that struck a nerve with me, especially after everything he did. I mean, he's n he wasn't really that attractive, but that's one thing I can get over. But in combination with that, he's calling my sperm dick snot, acting like he doesn't want it at all, demanding that I have anal sex with them, and even though he's not really that attractive, but like demanding it like that, if he would have asked for it nicely and waited for me to actually start having feelings for him, that would have been different. But he's snapping like that and kept me on the phone for a long time, rambling about his ex-partner and... Like, it was during a time where I was, I don't know why that night I stayed on the phone with him that long, because I clearly did not want to. I remember getting really annoyed because he was just rambling about pessimistic stuff. I mean, and he would be more attractive if he carried himself more nicely, really, because in that, in his boot camp picture, he looked attractive in that one. But that struck a nerve with me, telling me not to bump my clip posts and publicly commenting it like that. For everyone to see because first of all that makes me look really bad when someone does that when someone tries to make it seem like I actually do have a boyfriend even though I clearly don't and obviously don't as long as my episodes of Joe Winko talk are still being done in a bedroom that you guys can recognize and as long as I'm still here alone talking and doing these videos in a bedroom that you recognize me by myself that means I haven't found a lover and partner yet. Until my new videos are being done in a bedroom that you guys do not recognize and sh it shows that I live somewhere else, apparently living with my lover and partner, that means that I finally have found someone. But as long as I'm still here alone in this room, that means that I haven't found anyone and that I'm still single. Because I didn't know Chester. I mean, based on the interactions I had with him, he probably didn't realize that they were negative interactions to me. But based on the interactions that I had with him, it didn't seem like we were such a match, really. And in all honesty, after a while, I didn't like him at all, really, because he was calling my sperm dick snot, uh, keeping me on the phone, rambling about how much his last marriage to this guy sucked, and how he's clearly still not over it yet. And then... And then demanding that I stick my penis up his ass instead of, like, being friendly about it. I mean, being, instead of, like, letting us get closer to each other. That turned me off, really. And then he messaged me one day on FetLife, and he asked, like, if I was still interested in him and still wanted to get together with him. And I straight up told him no. I told him to leave me alone, and then I blocked him. And after I did that, it was kind of a what-the-fuck moment with me. I was like, whoa, did I seriously just do that? Did I seriously, did I seriously just tell someone to go away? And did I seriously just tell someone that I'm not interested and blocked them? And did I seriously just reject someone like that? Because usually 
that is honestly extremely rare. That is extremely rare. I never reject anyone. I usually, like, if I meet someone online, if I meet a guy online and we start talking to each other and it seems like he's not really into me at all or, like, I usually, I usually won't walk away. I usually will keep talking to them until they tell me that they're not interested and straight up tell me and then they ditch me themselves like the previous how many guys have I talked about so far in this video? Four or five guys? Like the previous four guys have, really? I mean, I usually never reject anyone. I mean, because all the other guys I talked about in this video so far, and all the other guys from Failures of My Love Life Volume 2 and Failures of My Love Life Volume 1, they all did reject me. But, I mean, even the guy from Australia, he rejected me. Because I said, if you send me a plane ticket, I could come visit you. But he didn't do that. So that counts as rejection from his end. But I told this guy I wasn't interested. And I blocked him and everything. And I know what some of you guys may be saying. You guys may be saying, oh, Joe, there was a nice guy for you. And you just rejected him. Did you just listen to what I just said about this idiot? Seriously? I mean, he was he was not a match for me, really. And first of all, he wasn't even attractive, calling my penis dick snot. And there was, there was some other stuff too, but it would take too long to explain, really. But me and him were not a match, honestly. Not to mention that he didn't even like to drive on and go on road trips and that he didn't want to live in Florida either. Yeah, those were two major ones, but I didn't really get into detail on those but those were also two major ones so no way <laughs> no especially if you think my my sperm is dick snot and that's what you're acting like it is and acting like you don't want it i'm not interested in being with someone like that no i want a guy who begs me for my sperm not a guy who acts like he doesn't want it and that i have to force it inside of him that's sickening and i'm not into that really and that's fucking stupid but speaking of fucking stupid, we're still not done here yet because there's another guy. Now, I'm not going to say this guy's real name, but his name, I'm going to say that his name is Bryce. That's the name that I'm going to use in this video. And I think out of all these guys, I think this is the one that disgusted me the most. Well, oh, it's, it's difficult to say that, really, because the other ones really did also, but... Now, I'm going to show you his first message he sent to me, and I'm going to... I don't really want to read it out loud, because the way this guy refers to himself and thinks of himself... I mean, it's not uncommon for people on FetLife to, like, down-talk to them, themselves like this. But with him, like, referring to himself like this and the stuff he had on his profile, it wasn't only insulting himself, because you guys have to remember, I'm also an African-American guy myself. So I am kind of a black man myself, really. I mean, I'm, I only say kind of because I'm mixed with a lot of stuff. But technically, I kind of am a black guy. I mean, that's not always the first thing that people notice about me right away. But I kind of am a black guy myself also. This guy, Bryce, on his profile, he said that he was submissive, even though his profile on FetLife has him listed as a slut instead. That's what it's saying now when I look at it. He had on his profile that he thought that African-American men were subhuman. That's how he was describing that's how he was describing himself and technically describing me, saying that we're subhuman and saying that we don't deserve to like have rights or anything and that we should all be bossed around and controlled. And you know, that kind of, it did strike a nerve, but it also made me feel queasy seeing an African American person type that about themselves and seeing them type that, and he messaged me on Fat Life. This is the message he sent me. Nasty N-word here, and Jax would love to worship and honor and obey you. Now, before I get to that, like you, like you said that, like I said that, like he thought that African-American men 
were subhuman. That's something that struck a nerve with me because that's insulting me also. In all fairness, if you first look at some of my pictures, in, at first glance, you might not notice that I actually am African American because as I said, I'm mixed with a lot of other stuff. You might not notice that right away, but if you keep looking through my pictures and you take a close enough look at my pictures, you take a close enough look at all of my pictures, you will eventually see that I myself actually am a black man myself and that I'm not white, which is probably what this guy thought I was at first when he first saw my picture on FetLife. But I'm starting to think that after he was talking to me, and he was probably looking at more pictures of me too after a while, he realized that I wasn't because after a while he started to get really, really rude and disrespectful to me. Now, he could talk this way to anyone. It wouldn't surprise me if he talked this way to everyone, but I even remember thinking when I first read his profile and like, he changed the text on it now. I didn't have time to screenshot it right away. I don't know why I didn't screenshot it right away. But I remember what it said earlier. And I was just thinking, should I keep talking to this guy? And then I think in the back of my mind, I didn't, I think I was thinking this subconsciously. I was just thinking, this will be very interesting for volume three of Failures of My Love Life, Joe Winko Talk. So I kept talking to him, also because I was really bored, and it's not like I had anyone cooler to talk to. Well, uh, and then, gosh, I don't want to say that, but I didn't have anyone romantically interested in me at that time. I'll just leave it at that. And, I mean, I, I was thinking, okay, maybe there's a chance that this person could turn out to be cool. Maybe I could talk them out of thinking that way. I clearly failed on that, but let's continue. Or he failed on that, but let's continue. So I was being polite and I asked him, what's up? And then he replied, I want you to dominate, degrade, and own this N-word. You have snap. And then I typed back, I don't have snap. Can we meet sometime? And then I gave him my phone number. Oh yeah, this must have been before um, Omicron got really bad. Yeah, this was in November of 2021 before I heard about the Omicron variant. And then I gave him my phone number and then he typed in, hey, I'll text you. And then he gave me his phone number. And then a little bit later he replied, no answer, guess you're playing games too. Now that's another thing about me. I always prefer for people to call me instead of text me really. I mean, I know I just said that the one idiot kept me on the phone for six hours and I was mad about that because he was talking about negative stuff. I mean, I stayed on the phone with guys longer than that and I never got mad at those conversations because we were actually talking about interesting stuff, really. But Bryce, he kept getting mad because I kept missing his text messages and, you know, he never showed me a picture of his face. I mean, he did show me a picture of his ass and I did think it was nice and everything. But then he just got kept getting mad at me over and over again for taking a long time to reply to his text messages. He never wanted to call me at all for some stupid reason. I don't know why he never wanted to talk on the phone with me. And I thought it was stupid that he never wanted to call me. But he shouldn't have been getting mad about that. And I think what it probably was was that he was looking at my pictures, realizing that I actually am an African-American man and everything he says bad about himself, how he's subhuman and how he doesn't deserve rights at all and how he's... I mean, don't get me wrong. I definitely believe this person is subhuman, but not because he's African-American, because he's a jerk and he's an idiot and because he's typing all that stuff. That's why I think he's subhuman. And also because he's disrespectful. And I think the reason why he was being disrespectful to me, getting pissed off at me because I was taking too long to reply to his text messages. And I think subconsciously, I, w I think subconsciously I was kind of cutting him off and ignoring him. Let me read to you. I even forgot to screenshot his text messages, but I'll do that in post at once I start post-production on this episode. Let me read to you exactly how our whole contact ended. Let me look him up real quick. 
I forgot to delete them from my sub, I mean, my, uh, from my contact list. Oh yeah, another thing I forgot to mention. I actually, this guy was saying that, um, African American guys, like, he was saying that, like, talking about how he should have no rights at all, and how he should just be bossed around and everything. So I kind of tried taking advantage of that. I asked him to do a voiceover in my Scary Sims 2 movie, Onryo, because I needed someone to do the voice as the DJ at the end of Onryo. I mean, I could have done it myself, but I needed someone who had that... I mean, I needed someone else who had that African-American male twang to his voice. I mean, I kind of do have it myself a tad bit. I mean, I guess. I don't know if I really do, honestly. But um, I wanted him to do the voice as DJ Carl. I even told him that the character survives. And then he typed in, I'm here to serve, not to be used as a character in your damn game. And then I typed back to him, have you ever thought that you probably fit the dom slash master role than a sub slash slave? I mean, dominant bottom guys do exist. Because the thing was, he was being really rude and really disrespectful to me while I was texting him. And I was not okay with that. I mean, I was humoring him for a time at first. I mean, because I was taking a long time to reply to his text messages. But eventually, it didn't take very long for it to start pissing me off. Because we weren't in contact with each other for that long. Especially if all the stuff he had typed on his profile about how he thinks lowly of his own race and everything. It kind of struck a nerve with me because we're both black men ourselves, really. And it really didn't take long for me to get mad at him for the way he was, like, getting pissed off at me for taking a while to reply to his text messages. I mean, I really thought he should have just called me instead, but he never did. And it struck a nerve with me, honestly. And I just ended up telling him off through text messages because he was too much of a wimp to answer his phone. But I just ended up telling him off through text messages that he was being a jerk the whole entire time. I didn't like any of the stuff he had on his profile. I'm not going to show you the text messages either, because I really, it's too negative, honestly. And then I told him, you just earned yourself a spot in Volume 3 of Failures in My Love Life, and my Volume 3 episode of Failures in My Love Life of Joe Winko Talk, which I was planning on filming on Valentine's Day, and here I am right now. And then he just said, whatever, and then we just stopped talking to each other. Yeah, it's kind of like the trash took its own, his own self out, really. I mean, he was... He had some serious issues, and it was sad that I managed to attract someone like that. I mean, me and him never met in person, but I definitely dodged a bullet with this idiot, really. And it's it's upsetting, honestly. I mean, the stuff he was typing about himself... And, yeah, but it is what it is. You can't really think too much about this. So, the last guy who I'm going to be talking about in this episode of Failures in My Love Life, Volume 3, is a man, not a man I met on FetLife, but a man I met on Seeking Arrangement. Seeking Arrangement is a site that someone recommended to me. I mean, I sign up for so many dating sites because I try to expand my options as wide as possible so I can have more of a chance of finding someone and I'm not finding anyone on any of these sites but I met this one guy on Seeking Arrangement he was apparently this rich businessman living in Tampa Florida he was looking for a younger guy to be with that's what he was saying we were talking to each other, and this was a really long time ago. This was a really super long time ago, before coronavirus. That's how long ago it was. And we never met each other. He said that he was going to watch a few of my YouTube videos. I never knew which of my YouTube videos he watched, but as we kept talking to each other, he eventually got back to me and told me, we are not a match. I don't want to be with you. And I was just like, what? Why not? And he says, he told me that I, he watched some of my YouTube videos and he was able to tell that I was, I mean, in his opinion, he thought that I was really out of line. He said that I had some 
serious issues. I don't know which of my videos he watched. He said that I was out of line, that I had some serious issues. He said that he was looking for a young man who was a professional. He said that I had no ambition and no potential. And that was a total what the fuck and I called it I called him because like he caught me at a bad time when he told me that because when you try to break me down like that I get pretty pissed off and defensive so I called him and I ended up cursing him out and calling him an idiot and then he hung up on me and he blocked my number but he also told me before I did all that he also told me that he was looking for a young professional man who they could build a relationship with, they can bond with, and so he could use, like, who would have him for guidance. And he wants a young professional man who would eventually turn into a rich businessman like himself. That's basically what he wanted to find, someone who would have him for guidance, who he can give advice to. He wanted to be a mentor to someone. That's what he wanted to do, be a mentor to someone so they could grow up to become a snobby, rich businessman like himself, really. Which is honestly something that I never want to become because those people are usually the most low-down people ever. I mean, aside from the stranger who took me on the road trip to Arkansas, because he was a really high-class businessman, the stranger who took me on the road trip to Arkansas, Virginia, and Ohio a long time ago, who was actually straight and not even interested in me. He was a high-class businessman, but he liked my posts, and he liked my costume, and he likes my YouTube videos. Aside from that, man, those high-class businessmen are usually, from what I know about them, they usually tend to be the worst kind of people ever, the most disrespectful kind of people ever, because they think that they're all that, even though they're not. Exactly like this man was, exactly like Peter was. Emphasis on the word was because this man is no longer alive at all. He ended up dying of coronavirus in April of 2020 because before I was doing this episode of Joe Winko Talk, I decided to look up his name, his name that I had because I had his phone number and I found a death record for him and it said that he died of coronavirus back in April of 2020. So he was one of the first people to die of coronavirus. Yet he wanted me he wanted to be a mentor to me and wanted me to use him for guidance. And thank fucking God that I didn't end up being his guidance or whatever the fuck you want to call it, mentee or something, someone following his mentorship, because I probably would have ended up in the graves with him. But I didn't. And here I am today, and there he is. He's already been in the ground for almost two years. In April, it'll be two years, because he died of coronavirus. And he was a stuck-up asshole, and I'm glad he's dead. Can the rest of these guys please join him? Please? The stupid guy from Australia? The stupid guy from Virginia? The stupid guy from Texas who said I was too young to be a master? The stupid guy who said I was one-sided because I wouldn't suck him off at all? Or Chester, the stupid guy who called my sperm dick snot? Or Bryce, the stupid guy who thought that people the same color as him deserve no rights at all, which was absolutely sickening for me to hear. Can all of those guys please join the graves with Peter? Seriously, because the world would be a better place without people like this. And it upsets me that these are the people who I was chosen to cross paths with. At least one of them are dead. That's... Or at least I, for sure I know one of them is dead. So it counts as something. Better than nothing. But counts as something. And I know that's a bit savage. But, you know, after so many guys you talk to online put you through so much stuff like this. You eventually do start to become a bit savage. But I try to hold on. Because I know that one day. I will find someone who I am compatible with, and who I am happy to be with. And I guess after meeting all this trash I talked about in Volume 3 of Failures of My Love Life, or Volume 2 of Failures of My Love Life, or Volume 1 of Failures of My Love Life, I will appreciate them 
a lot more because I'll know what's out there and they'll be even more special to me then. <laughs> but yeah, this is how I celebrated Valentine's Day. It's volume three of Failures of My Love Life, Joe Winko talk. I hope you guys all found it interesting. Let me know which guy you thought was worse, really. I mean, I honestly have no luck with guys at all. I'm, I'm, I mean, yeah, I did try casting a love spell, like, well, I always try to cast love spells. I plan on casting more eventually, especially now since the moon is waxing right now. That's when you do spells to bring something into your life. But, um, gonna try to cast another love spell, not targeting anyone specifically, but to bring someone nice into my life instead. Hopefully it works out well. And hopefully there won't be any more failures in my love life episode of Joe Winko Talk. But even if they are, I hope you guys still find them interesting. If at least something came out of all these misadventures that I had. So that's it for this episode of Joe Winko Talk. Don't forget to like, don't forget to comment, don't forget to subscribe, and don't forget to like me on Facebook and follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Tumblr. And I hope you guys are all having a good Valentine's Day. I'm going to try to do a gaming live stream tonight after I'm done editing this video. But hope it didn't bring you down too much. I hope you guys found it entertaining and interesting. I mean, people love drama, and there's definitely drama in this video. So that's basically it. Peace out, people.